In this video, we're going to be going over a very quick overview of both the beautiful soup module in Python as well as the requests module in Python as well. So if you're not familiar, a very brief introduction to both of those requests is going to be a module that's going to allow us to access various resources on the web. So allow us to obtain uh, information from various websites navigate to those websites and beautiful soup is going to allow us to parse that information so once we navigate to those websites we might want to extract certain types of content from those websites and beautiful soup is going to allow us to do that so this is going to be a very much from the ground up video the only thing i assume that you have installed on your machine is python and pip pip for installing python packages if you have both of those things installed in your machine you should be ready to follow along one to one and it should work out just fine so we're going to go over some of the basics of both the requests and beautiful soup module in the first part of this video and then we're going to bring all of those things that we learned into a, a very real project or a very simple project I should say this is really meant to be a very minimal introduction to both of these modules and just to see an example of how you can be effective with both of these things so let's just get started by installing both the requests and beautiful soup modules on your machine you probably will already have requests installed but we'll just make sure that you have that uh, installed in any case so go ahead and open up a uh, terminal or if you're on Windows a command prompt and go ahead and type in the following two uh, lines. So pip install requests. If you already have this installed in your machine like I do, you'll see some requirement already satisfied messages pop up here. That's totally fine. If you don't, it will install on your machine. You probably should have this installed already. The other one is install beautiful soup 4. So go ahead and say pip install bs4 and I already have this installed on my machine so we're good to go. All right, so we've got all the things that we need installed. I'm just going to go ahead and close that window, and we're going to move back to our file here. So we've gone ahead and done this part. We've installed both of these modules. So what we're going to do next is we're going to import them and use them. So we're going to import requests, and then we're going to import a specific class from the BS4 module that we installed, specifically the Beautiful Soup class. So this is going to allow us to in the terms of beautiful soup, soupify content that we obtain from a website. And again, that will make it parsable so we can extract information from that content. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to use the request module. And I guess before I should go for, before I go any further, I want to mention that all of the code along with the comments that is kind of supplementing what I'm saying here, all that is going to be provided on my GitHub and the link to that will be accessible in the description. So you can go ahead and download that if you want some additional information as to what I'm doing or saying. Right, so back to this, we're going to create a variable called result, and we're going to say request.get, and then we're going to pass in the website that, we're, that we want to access. So in this case, I'm just accessing the homepage of Google, so I'm just going to move my browser over here, so I'm just going to access this page right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that, and then what we're going to do to make sure that the page was actually accessed is we're going to print out the status code, which is just an HTTP status code letting us know whether or not the page was accessible or not. So 404 errors uh, are, are an HTTP code that's letting you know that the content that you're looking for is not present. A 200 code is letting you know that the content that you're looking for is present and the response is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and write this. I'm going to run it. So I'm going to say Python. This file is called beautiful soup and request.py. If I run this, it's going to uh, run it. Let me just clear the terminal because it's kind of messy. Let me run that again. And we see that the, the code that we get back from the google.com homepage is 200, which indicates that indeed the page is uh, accessible. So another thing that we can do is we can also print out some other information of the web page that we just accessed, like the HTTP headers. And again, for more information on both the headers and the status codes, you can navigate to these links that are in the comments that point to the Wikipedia articles on both of those topics. So I'm just going to go ahead and write this and we'll see what the headers look like. So there's just some extra information on the google.com homepage. So for instance, we can see here the domain is google.com. There's some other information here as well that might be of use. I'm just going to go ahead and close that. It's more or less just to verify that not only is the page valid, but it's also indeed the page that we wanted to obtain. Let's keep moving down here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to extract the content of the page, and that is actually the source of the page, and we're going to store that in a variable. So the, the 
object that we created here, this result, the result has these built-in methods, status code, headers. That's how we were able to print out both of those types of information that we just printed out there. Another one that it has is .content, and that is going to return the source of that page. And then what we're gonna do is store that into a variable called SRC for source, and then we're going to have uh, this variable. So let's go ahead and run that, and I'm just gonna print out the source so you can actually see what it looks like. I'm gonna run that like this. So we see a bunch of uh, output here, and this is really just the web source of the uh, google.com homepage. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Now that's kind of a lot of stuff all just thrown on the screen. That's great that we can actually access it. Now we turn to Beautiful Soup because this is going to allow us to actually do something with that content. So what we're going to do now that we've obtained that content, we've navigated to that web page, we've verified that we're on the actual web page that we want, and now what we're going to do is we're going to pass that source variable into this Beautiful Soup class creating a soup object. And this really is just kind of um, an object that Beautiful Soup creates from this source, and it allows us to extract certain types of information that we might want to extract from this thing. So we're going to store the result of that object in this variable called soup. So I'm passing in source here, and there's an extra parameter here, this LXML. You can more or less just ignore this extra parameter. It doesn't really mean too much. If you don't have it in there, you'll get a warning essentially to tell you to put it in there. So it's there for all intents and purposes, but you don't necessarily need to worry so much about uh, why this is here. So we have the soup object. So for instance, one thing that we can do now that we have the soup object is we can do things like give me all of the links on the page. So what we can do is we can create a variable, which I can call links, and I can say soup.findall. So findall is a method provided from this beautiful soup object that we're accessing here. And what do I want to find all of on this page? I want to find all of the A tags. So this A is the argument that's being passed in. It tells Beautiful Soup to say, hey, find all of the A tags or all of the links on this page and then store them in this variable links. And then we're going to go ahead and actually just print those out to the screen. And just so we don't get like too much content, I'm going to go ahead and comment out the previous print statements here just so we don't have too much uh, output on the screen. So we've got our links. We'll print them out and then we'll print a new line. So I'll write that, give it a run, and let's see what we get. So this is the output that we just ran here, and we can see that we have a list. So you can see the square bracket here, and the end square bracket indicates a Python list. And the contents of this list are all of the A tags on the page. So if I move, uh, let's just take a look at some of these links. So we have images. Uh, we have one that has the text maps. So let me just kind of move this back over here. Indeed, um, you know, if we look, let's just look at over here. We have this thing called images. That is pointing to the link in the top right maps, uh, etc. So we can look for other links in this list that will correspond to the actual links on the page that we uh, have just have ser searched for all the links on the page. So that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and comment that out so we don't have excess output here. And let's just keep going down. So getting all of the list of links is one thing, but we might want to actually extract uh, certain types of links. So maybe the page that we're uh, requesting, the page that we've just supified, it has links that we're actually after. So this example here says, okay, actually I care about all of the links that have a certain string in the text field. So what do I mean by the text field? If I bring this back up, I essentially want to look for all of the links, let's say, that have um, the word about in them. So I want to see all of the links that have the word about. So anything that's an A tag where we, uh, between the A and the slash A, there's the word about. If it has that, I want that link. So that's one example, one use case out of many that you could form in this, uh, in this type of uh, workspace. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through all of the links that we've obtained from above. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say if the word about is in the text of the link. So again, what I'm doing is I'm using the dot text part of that um, variable. So as I'm looping through each of these links in that list, every one of those elements in that list is actually a beautiful soup element. So that allows me to call this dot text uh, function on each of those elements because that is defined from this element that is extracted and stored in this list. So I'm saying, look at the text in that link in that list, and is the word about in that uh, in that text? If so, then go ahead and print out that link because I care about that link. And actually, go ahead and print out the um, uh, print out the actual thing that it goes to as well.
So that's what this is doing here. So link also has a uh, attribute, or I should say a, a function, ATTRS, and I'm looking for a specific attribute of that link. So inside the A tag, there's an attribute inside of that, which is the href tag inside of that. And I'm saying, give me the content of that href inside of the link tag, which is the uh, inside of this tag that has the A. So there's kind of a lot of Russian doll kind of structure going on there. So let's go ahead and just print that out. I'll write that, run it. So what we have here is we have the link. So we found the about uh, Google thing right here. So that's good. And then we also have the uh, href attribute of this link. So for instance, we see this whole, this is the whole uh, A tag. So we have everything from the start of the A tag to the end of it, including the text, including the uh, href. And then what we did with the next line is we said, hey, inside of the A tag, there's this attribute called href, and we want to access the content of that attribute inside of the A tag. And what we did there, that's precisely this, and that's what we're printing out right here. So I hope that makes sense. I know that's kind of drilling down quite a bit and you can go pretty complicated with these types of expressions. But I think once you understand this level, you can arbitrarily apply different levels of complexity to your own situations, your own problems, your own situations, your own scenarios. I said that already. Anyway, so we have this structure set up. We have kind of a general idea of how to use both requests and Beautiful Soup. Let's go ahead and try to apply this on a more elaborate web page. And the web page that I had in mind is this web page right here. So this is just a collection of briefings and statements given at the White House. So you can see the day of this uh, upload is September 12th. And so these are the most recent remarks by uh, you know, briefings and statements that have something to do with the White House. So there's a whole list of them. And the goal of what we're going to do with Beautiful Super Requests is we're going to navigate to this page. We're going to try to find a way to extract all of the links on this page and specifically all of the links that have uh, are, are sort of in this feed here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to store them into a list and then you could think about doing whatever you like to that list. I mean, of course, like the possibilities are, are quite endless depending on your goals, but this just kind of gives you the scaffolding, the structure, the idea to take this and then, you know, do whatever you want for your own purposes. So let me just minimize this for now. Let's go back to this code. So, right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab. So I'm going to go ahead and say tab new. I have another file that I've created uh, and have some initial comments in, which I've called whitehouseexample.py. I'm going to go ahead and open that file here. So you can see that I've just opened a Python file, which is called whitehouseexample.py, and it just has some comments which kind of indicate what this is all about. So we want to obtain links from this website, as we just mentioned. We want to, uh, well, this is just kind of telling you what this is what this website is all about. And the goal, as I mentioned before, is to extract all of the links on that page uh, and then just kind of print them out into a list. So, right, so we can pretty much use the majority of what we already have uh, and we can just kind of go from there and uh, more or less just copy and paste some things that we have from our previous file. So let's start off by just doing the very basic things. Let's go ahead and import requests. Let's go ahead and say from BS4 import beautiful soup. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, let me just go back over to this tab over here because I think it's a little bit easier to just copy and paste some of these things. We're going to want to do a very similar thing where we use the request.get method and uh, we're going to paste in not google.com this time, but we're going to paste in the website of the, uh, of the statements. So we're going to go ahead and cut in there. I'm going to bring this website up. I'm going to copy this link here put this back over there and then I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in there. So this is now the website that we're accessing, the statements uh, for the content that we want to extract. Okay, so we've got that. Now the next step is we want to, let's go back over here. So let's see, what else do we do? So one of the other things that we did is we stored the content once we've navigated to that site is we stored the content of that into a variable called SRC. So that's pretty much just a direct copy and paste. We can just move that right in there. So now we have an SRC variable that has the content from the result. And now what we want to do, going back over to the initial uh, file that we have, I want to create a soup object. So I'm going to copy that, move that over there. That's also exactly the same. So I've gotten the source from the web page. I've created a soup object based on that source that will allow us to parse. And then let's go ahead and write some new code. 
So I'm going to create a list which are called URLs. This will just be the list that will populate with the uh, links that we care about. And then what I want to do is I want to loop through all of the links. So let's go back to the page here. So we have a couple links. These are the links right here on the page. Let's just go ahead and inspect them. So if you're on Chrome or Firefox, if you right click on an element on your page, there should be something like this where it says inspect or inspect element. If we go ahead and click that, we'll be taken to this uh, sort of thing over here, which is showing us exactly what in the source of this page, this element corresponds to. You can see as I move over this content, various things are being highlighted to indicate that these things correspond to the code that I'm sort of mousing over here. It's a very nice tool. So basically, one thing that we can kind of observe is that all of these links, if I right click on this one as well, all of these links are contained in these H2 heading uh, class tags. So inside of the H2 tags, we have the the a link or the uh, link that we're actually after so you can see that all of the links on this page are in fact formatted in this way so all of these things are in between h2 tags and one thing that we can do we didn't see this exactly but one thing that we can do is we can tell beautiful soup hey find all of the h2 tags on a given page and then we'll loop through those and then extract a link from those and then we'll uh, have our list that we're after minimize that so we've got our empty list so now let's do this. Let's say for h2 tag in soup.find underscore all. And then here, remember, if we go back to this uh, initial file here, we wanted to find all the links. And what we did is we said find all the things that had the a tag. Well, in this case, we don't want to find all the things with the a tag just yet. We want to find all the things with, with the h2 tag. So we'll go ahead and say find all of the ones in this soup that have the tag h2. And then inside of that, if you recall, if we go back to that page, inside of that H2 tag, there's an A tag, and that's what we want to extract. So we'll go ahead and minimize this and say, okay, now that we're looping through all the H2 tags, let's say A tag is equal to H2 tag dot find. And what, what do we want to find? We want to find the A tag inside of that. So there's find all and there's find. So find all is going to be a function that's going to return to us a list. It's going to return all of the ones on the page. There might be no items of this form on the page. There might be one. There might be many. In any case, it's going to return to us a list. This A tag is going to just find a single element. So it's just going to find a tag, the first tag that corresponds to this. And then we're going to store that in this variable A tag here. Now what we want to do, we have hypothetically our a tag, and we're going to add that to our URLs list that we have up here. So we're going to say urls.append, and then we're going to say a, a tag, and actually I don't want to just add the a tag, I actually want to do kind of similar to what we did over here, where I said not just the link, but I want the attribute of that link that corresponds to href. So going back to this thing here, we've looped through all of the h2 tags on the page, inside of the loop we have this thing that says okay inside that h2 tag there should be an a tag and actually furthermore i want the href attribute i want the actual link that is inside of this href attribute so let's go ahead and do something very similar so let's say a tag dot attrs and then we'll do href just like we did before Okay, so that is pretty much all we need there. And then just to make sure that we actually have a list that's populated properly, let's go ahead and print out URLs and see what we have. So we'll write this, we'll clear the terminal, and then we'll say Python, and the file is called the White House Example Pi. If we do that, it'll run there, it'll grab them. We can see that we have this now, this list of all of these links that correspond to each one of the uh, elements on this page. So we've successfully extracted the links for each of these briefings and statements. Pretty cool. And not very much code either. You can see this is quite concise. So this is hopefully going to be a bit of a springboard video. If either of these concepts are new to you, or if you want to see these things in action, or if you want to just kind of, you know, get up and running with either request or beautiful soup. I hope this video serves the purpose. This is kind of the goal of it. Uh, if you want more information or something more in depth or a more involved scraping project, I have playlists on my channel that involve web scraping. So using Selenium, PyAuto GUI, um, 
uh, Robo Browser, lots of other packages that kind of focus on this idea. So if you want to see more in-depth examples, I encourage you to go over to my channel and check out those playlists. I can also link to them in the description of this video. So thanks again for watching. As always, the code for all of these will be on my GitHub, and you can download those and play with these examples yourself. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day.